What is happening guys? Welcome back to another video of the 6.0 F550 rebuild. Um, mostly everything is uh, completed. I have a few more things that I got left to do, including the front right here before I paint. And then uh, some miscellaneous stuff here and there. Um, underneath the cab I have to uh, wire wheel and a little bit up here. But um, let's go into the main issue. Uh, I did get done with this over the weekend and I had it pull it out. It was running for a little while and um, I blew it all off, all the dust off and everything. And as soon as I got in and stepped on the gas, put it in gear and stepped on the gas, it just shut off. Um, first thing that comes to mind is the H-pop. Um, checked everything, all the values. Uh, they say if it's either at 15% or 85%, the IPR valve is most likely bad, which uh, won't build enough pressure to start the system. So I ran it through my computer. It was at 85%. My ICP valve was, uh, or IPC sensor was also showing only 755 and it wasn't building any pressure or changing. So therefore it won't start. Um, I ended up ripping this down real quick and pulling the IPR valve. The new one's in already, but let me show you the old one and my little predicament that I'm actually glad that this happened. So as you can see, this is the old IPR valve and the screen got sucked down into it and pretty much got lodged and got stuck and also the screen looked a little weird as you can see it's a little like rounded well i put my scope down there and you can definitely feel like this is shot and i come to find an old ipr valve sensor or ipr valve screen sitting in front of that so this was double screened um obviously that's not how that's supposed to go in so I fished that out, um, got everything out, and uh, I also been wondering why this has been like running like very like like a sort of a rough idle, but not too bad. It would start, it wouldn't have any issues, but uh, it just it didn't seem like it was running right, like an injector was bad or something like that. So now we're gonna find out once it's all back together. Is there an injector bad? Um, I don't think there is. There could be a stuck injector, means it was sitting three years before I bought it. And then um, it was also, it's been here, but I've been starting it frequently um, for the last 10 months to uh, rebuild it and everything. So pretty much just installed the new one. I got that today and I am going to put everything back together. All right, guys, we are in the truck. Everything's back together. Um, the ICP is plugged back in as well as um, all the injectors and the FICM and the uh, IPR valve sensor. Um, that is in, and uh, we are getting down to business with this. So in the IP, yeah, ICP, um, you want it to build pressure, obviously. It needs about, I believe, 1,500 to start. Um, and then you can see I was already messing with it. Uh, and it's staying constant for the regulation percentage. So this should, shouldn't should be 15 or 85. It should at least fluctuate. And then when it finally starts and idles, it'll go down to like 45 or something like that. Um, it's going to run rough when you first start it after you do that because you essentially let all the air escape out of it. So it's going to take a little while for it to push the air out of the system. Um, so we're going to watch this as I crank it and it should start up. So you can see see how it sort of hovered down. It's not all the way up and never got to 85%. Um, and ICP pressure 
is a lot higher than it was. It was only initially getting to about 755, so it wasn't building enough pressure. But uh, I'm just gonna let her idle. You can see she's smoking a lot. Um, I probably do have a stuck injector, most likely. Um, not a big deal. Uh, but. Everything looks good. Uh, looks like it's pretty steady. So I'm just gonna let this run for about 10, 15 minutes. And uh, you know, let the air just get out, let it clean up. It feels like it's already starting to clean up a little bit. And uh, we'll come back, but it's a success. It wasn't a high pressure oil pump, thankfully, because that would have really sucked. But, um, yeah, let me get back later on and we'll clear up. All right, guys, see she had a little bit of a mess going on. That was the one, uh, the one line coming from the coolant tank, the reservoir tank down into the, um, just constantly was spitting out. I tried to plug it, it wouldn't plug, so I just leave it be cleaned everything on top of there anyway um, she seems to be she smoked at first um, she's still a little smoky like I said this truck has been sitting for probably with with our ownership about four years um, roughly three years of a sitting when we bought it started right up no issues um, besides all the rust repair and everything else that we had to do um, but other than that, essentially it was a good truck. It started um, in good shape. The cab's all good. There's not a lot of rot or anything like that, especially for it being like a, a northeastern area like New York, high New York um, truck. But she's running. She sounds good. She sounds a little bit better than she did before. Um, still probably have a stuck injector, um, most likely, but that I'll put, throw some injector cleaner in there and hopefully it'll just like sort of pop it out or, you know, clean everything up. Like I said, there's probably a lot of carbon buildup or something in there. Um, it was previously a motor swap with a brand new low, uh, long block and, uh, you know, things happen. Um, like I said, which I'll show you. Just let me turn this off. It's been running for a little bit. Hey guys. Um, so, like I said before, you can see the main issue here. It wasn't just that the screen sucked in which let me try and pop this off so you can see. If you can see in there, there's a little piece of screen. Uh, let me get the light. If you can see, there's a little piece of screen in there and it got stuck, jammed this up, and you know, made it fail, essentially. But the other issue I had, which I wouldn't even known if that didn't happen, was this was on, and then this must have got sucked in from previous screen change, or they put on a screen thinking that it must have sucked the screen in, or there was no screen, and never check the inside of the high pressure oil pump. So essentially this was jammed in there like that. And I'm actually glad that I opened it up and was able to see that. I do see there's a lot of stuff on here. Um, it's mostly just like the plastic from this sort of getting shoved around and pushed and mangled. But uh, there might be some residuals in the system. Uh, I might have to change the screen again, um, but I'm gonna keep those on, you know, in stock, probably buy another IPR valve just in case. I know they're, 
you know, if you can get it all out, they're pretty much, you can just pop a new screen on, new O-rings, and you're good to go. But I'd rather have, you know, a little bit of extra parts. It is a 6.0. It is picky. So I'd rather have them just to be safe, especially the screens. If I have at least two or three, I can, uh, I can at least make it somewhere. These are essentially pretty easy to take off. Actually, the hardest part is to get off the stock, which I think I'm going to end up getting rid of. The stock air intake, this thing sucks to remove. Um, no matter what you do, it just, it just doesn't want to come off. Um, there's no good way to do it, and I hated it putting it putting it back on and I hated taking it off so just remember that that's probably the hardest part of the job is this air intake system because it's all hard to to get out it doesn't want to move it doesn't want to you know bend it's it only goes in one way um, what I do suggest is take this off first and then pop this off if you can which that'll pop off there's two prongs down below and then pull that back as far as you can. And then what you'll do is you're gonna, you're gonna like lift this back and pull this up and sort of pop it off. Make sure your clamps are all loose and everything. And uh, it, you just gotta work it until it comes out. Um, also take this off, the uh, air filter gauge. And uh, that should give you some more room to push that back, but you still have, there's two prongs behind there, so you still have to lift that up and get that off. After you do that, you take the reservoir, it's two um, screws or two bolts, and then you pop that off. And then before you do anything, like obviously I have a um, coolant filter, so there's usually just a piece going from here to the radiator, so you can just take that off pop that off and then route it there so that way this is all self-contained pull that off lift it down and then you're going to uh essentially just take the this tubing off and all that and then you have to take the ficum off and pretty much the back three wiring harness uh the injectors and the ficum and the uh, ground wire on the back. And I didn't have no shield in the back, so it was a little bit easier. And then obviously, if you have an IPR uh, tool, that's what that is up there. It makes your life a hundred times easier um, because you can't get a regular socket on there. You can't, there's no room to get a wrench in there. So your life is pretty much a living hell when you're trying to take that out without the tool. So other than that, pretty much repeat the process backwards and uh and then just either if you have a computer or you have a buddy that has a computer you just have them uh check the uh pressures uh, obviously if it's 15 percent when you're turning it over or it's 85 percent when you're turning it over and it's not fluctuating and your icp is not building any pressure over i would say 1200 because between 1200 and 1500 should should fire up at least so i would just check those numbers um when it does you'll you'll hear a change in it when it does want to turn over it'll sort of the tone will sort of change and then uh you'll notice your your uh ipr valve um percentage or duty um you know fluctuating a little bit but like I said, if it's at 85% or 15%, it's most likely your IPR. You probably suck something in there and it got stuck open or closed. And, you know, it just happens. Uh, there's a lot of debris that comes through the engine. And that's why there's a screen there. But sometimes the screen does not work or it gets clogged up. And then that makes it so that it does not start. So other than that, all the body work's essentially done. Um, I just have to do underneath the cab with the wire wheel as well as the front of the body. And then this thing can get primed. The inside can get Raptor linered. The top can get Raptor linered and all the bare metal can get, uh, primed. And then that way, when it goes up to 
get paint it'll be pretty much okay in the weather and it can just get another coat of primer and then finally get some color on this baby um, it's been a long road there's been a lot of issues there's been a lot of times I just didn't want to work on this or it just was too much and I just wanted to sell it but you know that's what makes these things like more enjoyable when you finally get to the finish line and you know you could say like yeah I redid that you know I did this I did that this thing didn't look like this when I got it you know it just gives you more of appreciation for what you have and uh, what you do um, I like to spend a lot more time which in turn gets me more frustrated um, but other than that we are going to be doing the uh, primer and raptor liner in the next episode. Um, things happen. Unfortunately, the IPR valve went and scared the crap out of me because it is a 6.0. I thought it was an H-pop problem, but luckily we got that fixed. Everything's good. Every, all the percentages look good. Everything looks good. It runs better. So I can finally be happy and a little bit more uh, relieved on the situation and we can move on thank you guys for watching this video